so the bench I am sitting on is a bench that I helped build in the project called Project No Stand Zone. Right now, the place where we're at is Henderson Middle School and Elementary. Um, I used to go to this school sixth and fifth grade. My little brother, he actually goes here now. He's in kindergarten. And, you know, it's a special place to me because, like, I had a lot of experience here, like, during the summer and school year. And, you know, like, being that my little brother goes here, I come up here a lot, too. And it's just, like, um, this is one of the places in the neighborhood where it's starting to get a little nicer. Um, and, like, I hope that this is, like, a place where people can look at and say, well, if we could do that with Henderson, we could do that anywhere else, too. Well, we're on Ashton and Van Buren. Right behind me, you could see a vacant lot and maybe a vacant house that was caught on fire. Not sure. Looks like, looks so. It's very common. If you look down there, there's a, a vacant house. And these two vacant houses are side by side. There's trash all over the floor. And you could see a vacant garage right over there. And the roads are so bumpy. If, well, this road condition is actually okay. But it's just, it's bumpy. If you go on different streets, there's going to be cracks everywhere. It looked like there was an earthquake on that street. Take it from me. We in the River Roach area. And we wanted to show the parks, the hills. And it's the hill over there. <laughs> and it's like on the other side of the River Roach, it's animals, like horses and many more and swimming pools on the other side. Good evening everybody, I'm Yusuf and next to me is Lily. Say hi Lily. Hi. <laughs> okay, here's what I know about streets and getting around. When I'm on the sidewalk, I tend to get in the street because there is no room and I don't like walking near abandoned houses. I know a little bit about cars and trucks, and if you see here, my elegant piece of drawing. So this is a video clip of us driving down Warren Avenue, like other Warrendale people do. And, so, and there's always so many potholes, and there's cracks. It gets so rough on the road. And plus, people drive too, qu too quick. It's dangerous. I agree. I had three childhood friends died from an accident. Just like this person said, I'm very scary when it comes to crossing the street. Wow, really? I'm very sorry to hear that. We need to allow more time for the pedestrians to cross because there's not enough time for elderly and young youth to cross the streets. This is a sixth grader at Carver. Also thinks that the si streets and sidewalks are kind of dangerous to walk on. Growing up near the railroads, it was kind of fun. Near Rutland and Long Acre, used to do dangerous stuff on the tracks, but I didn't think it was dangerous. So here in Detroit, we got some of the nicest sidewalks we got. No, we don't. We really don't. But we do have some nice stuff. And in wintertime, you all know when it snows, the snow makes it, the trees look very nice and sometimes looks like a winter wonderland. Well, in 2016, there is a survey going on about top three most safety priorities. And the third one was speeding. That's more worse than gang and drug activity. We saw this map of all the car crashes shown, the black dots are the um, crashes, and Warren, Dell, and Cody Rudge in 2017. Well, that's a lot of crashes if I don't say so myself, and I do say so myself. But we wanted to know who could we talk to to find who can tell us about streets and who could tell us more about fixing them. So my name is Richard Doherty. I'm a city engineer for the city of Detroit. Uh, city engineer is the division head of the city engineering division and we are a part of the Department of Public Works. We are the stewards of the public right away. That anybody who wants to work on our roads uh, needs to come to us and uh, get a right away permit to do the work in the right away if they want to uh, alter the right of way in any way, uh, or if they want to build in it, like permanent structures and that, then they have to go through a petition process to either close a road, vacate the road, vacate the right of way for the road, vacate an alley. So they file a petition with the city clerk, and then we 
process it to see if any uh, anybody else in the right of way may have objections to it. There's water mains underground. There's sewer lines. There's gas lines. The tel you know the so. telecommunication lines are under there, so they all get to respond to uh, any concerns. Okay, Richard told us. Uh, um, he told us a whole lot more than we could take in. That's why I'm um, glad that Taylor asked him to break it down into a non expert language. Would you mind explaining that in a way where someone who doesn't have knowledge in your work field might be able to understand it? Uh, so, you know, so you own the land on your property and, and then usually, like if you have, if your house you own to typically a foot behind the city sidewalk and then the city, the sidewalk that is in front of your house is in city property and the road is, and then the sidewalk on the other side of the street, usually everything between the, t the two sidewalks the city owns so that everybody can access and get around the city. So public right-of-way is the means by which the public gets to move around and not be blocked. So, uh, so that, you know, it's important to have streets and walkways that connect us all together, and so that public space ends up being owned by somebody, and we end up managing it. So this is the desk where Mr. Doherty oversees all the streets and right-of-ways. Rich knew a lot about streets, even more than he does. Uh, so, yes, we've got 25, 2,600 miles of streets. Uh, throughout the city of Detroit. So we have uh, almost 1,900 miles of residential streets. We have 700 miles of what's categorized major roads. Now, sometimes the major roads don't look very major, but they, that's just a form of category. So for the major roads, the important thing to know is that we're not the only owner of the roads, that there's a, that the, like the state, for example, owns uh, Southfield. Mm -hmm. So Southfield Freeway is owned and maintained by MDOT. It's theirs to to manage. We manage the service drives along the uh, freeway, so we're responsible for resurfacing those. Uh, Outer Drive is a county road, so the um, Wayne County Road Commission or the Road Department is responsible for the condition of that road. Warren in this area is also owned by the county, so uh, that not kind of how I you know, make sure that we are doing our work. This is what the state, we have to certify each year to the state what road, roads we own, and, uh, and the county does the same thing. So, it, so. Mr. Doherty underlined how he doesn't take care of all the streets and that different roads are owned by different governments. Here's a map where the government owns which roads. We'll be happy to share with you. There are some complicated things that does not show like the state government owns the land under Southfield Freeway service road, but the city agrees to maintain them. Anyhow, later in our interview, the city engineer took us into detail how roads is built. There's a whole lot of ways that a road can deteriorate. Mm -hmm. The concrete and water is the biggest enemy to a road that mm -hmm. you can have. So you pour the concrete and there's uh, joints between the concrete. The joints have to be there because concrete expands and contracts with the change in temperature. So if you just pour a big thing of concrete out, it's gonna to turn to gravel very quickly because when it goes, when the sun heats it up, it's kind of, it starts wants to push against each other. And if you don't have that joint, that little space in between for that concrete to move, it just, it just beats itself up and turns to gravels. If your home is 90 years old, then that street in front of your house was probably constructed 90 years ago. So, you know, concrete is only supposed to last 30 years. And uh, so we've gone through and resurfaced the streets probably as many times as we possibly can. But um, so it's, we're going to have some tough choices to make going forward because at some point somebody's got to pay to rebuild the streets. And this led to some interesting and exchanges like comparing downtown streets to west side neighborhood streets. Most of the downtown streets are categorized as uh, major roads, so the state gives us more money per mile than they do for a residential street. It's about 10 times more money or more. Some people might say that you would focus on more populated areas or 
more places that bring in more revenue, like downtown and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that true, or what, are you more focused on neighborhoods like this? We're, we are focused on the entire city, and we try to serve, obviously on residential streets, we like to, you know, it, you know, we want to be able to pave everywhere, but we just don't, like I said, we don't have the resources. Every year we're doing 45 or 50 miles of streets out of 1,800. So we try to focus on those streets that are more populated just so that more people benefit from the investment. If a street's only got two homes left on it, you know, it really, you know, to, you know, it costs us $700,000 a mile to pave a road. So, you know, when you have those limited resources, you do have to make those type of hard choices. But we were really there to talk about how we felt walking around the neighborhood, especially as little kids, felt really dangerous because of all the speeding cars. I mean, people drive 40 or 50 in a 25 zone. We heard some similar comments when we interviewed Ms. Campbell at the Cody Rouge Alliance. Uh, there's a lot of speeding through our communities and um, again, safety is something that's important to our community. We want to make sure that uh, families are safe. Uh, so one of the ideas was to create like speed bumps or kind of create a way where um, it would kind of slow down the traffic of um, speeding cars. We wondered if these ratings related to how people and especially young people experience getting around the neighborhood. So we asked Mr. Doherty about it. Can you get like a little bit more into depth of how we can make the roads safer? Because here on a graph, it shows where like each black dot is when a crash occurs, a car accident occurs. Do you think like all the changes you're planning on making with the streets in Detroit, um, do you think it will be able to fix our problems, like the safety issues in Detroit? Because from like the households that are in the neighborhoods, they feel like they, like these issues with the roads are more dangerous than like drug activity and gang activity in the area. So okay. I want your opinion on that. All right. So which let's see, car speeding through the neighborhood, Detroit. You know when it was built years ago. You know you can see how it was built it, long straight streets and nice grid pattern it's easy to construct but it's also easy to drive very fast on those streets so how do you slow people down there's a lot of things you can do you can do, uh, do what's called traffic calming projects you can narrow road down that's called a road diet when you're taking a road that has five lanes, you want to narrow it down to a three-lane road. That you can add speed humps, speed bumps, speed cushions. So you can add curb, have the curb narrow a little bit so it looks like it's getting tighter. So cars, by nature, they're going to slow down because they think they see a driver thinks they see a conflict ahead. But the speed humps um, kind of force you to slow down with hopefully without losing your muffler and causing damage to your car. Speed bumps are far narrower. The speed hump is about 14 feet long, so you kind of roll over it and roll back, but it will cause you to slow down. On commercial streets, on big streets, we're trying to look at how we can help get pedestrians across safer. Uh, so at intersections, we may move the curb line out and, and um, out past where the parked cars are so that that walk across the street is now 16 feet shorter. It's not as hard to get through and then when you see that curb line out, cars tend to slow down. As a, when you have just that whole strip of parking area, parking area that people don't necessarily park in, cars tend to go faster. So you can do things in design to make it safer, to get people driving slower, more responsibly, to minimize the conflicts between pedestrians and cars, to uh, to make it more it's more of a complete street, it's called, where all users can enjoy the road from bikes to buses to cars to pedestrians that we provide safety for them. Lead agency for that is our traffic engineering division. They Each year they get grants to uh, focus on safety projects. This is a speed hump. This is a neck down um, where the curb narrows, like um, Mr. Doherty said. We showed him some examples of changing the roads to make people drive slower and asked him how we might get some similar changes. He talked about all the complex 
steps to making the streets safer, like speed bumps, narrow roads. We found up this proposal designed by Joy Southfield CDC for Joy Road and Arch City. And do you think would it improve the streets? Rich did explain, though it sounded complicated, how we could use the neighborhood framework to request changes to the streets. We asked him some, what, what's the process of designing a street? <laughs> what are the rules or process for changing a street? Like if we wanted to change it into a place to hang out or like paint or, you know, just do something creative like they did in work. So if you wanted to do something on the street as a private citizen, you'd have to, um, you know, we, we, if you want to put something in the road like this that's unique, we'd ask that the neighborhood kind of sponsor it, that your neighbors, and you know, People don't want things in front of their house that they view as ugly or unattractive. You kind of want everybody on board to do the same thing. And if this type of work is being done by uh, some third party or something, if you're doing it as a group, you'd, we'd ask you that you petition us. We reach out to city council, go through this petition process. So council says, yes, go ahead and do allow them to place it here. You know, obviously there's, you know, you think painting the road, that's not going to create an issue. But if that paint, if it doesn't um, have certain characteristics uh, where when it rains, it's not, it's not going to be slick and unsafe for either people to walk on it or cars to drive on it. You know, you know we did the, had somebody come do the painting out in Spirit Plaza, and there's this gritty sand that's mixed in with the paint so that it's rough enough so that feet don't slide on it and that. So you need a lot of those, that technical expertise, but we guide you through the process with it for the petition. So if you wanted to do this yourself, all we would ask that there's an organization that can maintain it that, uh, you know, that in six months if the paint starts failing or fading and looking lousy, that you're going to come back and refresh it and make it look good. So we kind of sign an agreement with you to maintain it. It's a maintenance agreement. Rich even opened up us about the, some of the frustration of his job and how the government sometimes has disagreement inside itself between different agencies, just like this neighborhood. Some days it's a little frustrating because you're kind of herding cats a lot of times. There's a lot of competing interests and, and obviously I manage one division out of a huge governmental apparatus that, you know, apparatus. With, you know within the uh, I'm city engineering that sits within Department of Public Works, but then the planning department, obviously they have their own focus and things that they're trying to achieve, and sometimes their interests may be different than ours, but we have to work together so that the public, at the end, we're serving the public's interest to the best of our ability. So they may think that there's a different approach to doing it, so you always have those debates, but um, like I said, I'm quite a few notches down from the mayor where everything's his responsibility. It was interesting to know how some, sometimes the planning and the development department has different views than the Department of Public Works. Here is the view of Canada out of his office. Beautiful, isn't it? So for the next year with the neighborhood framework, I think as a community, we should come together to figure out how we can make sure we bring these changes to make roads safer. It sounds complex, but I think we can do it. I think we can. Um, I would like to pass the mic to Marnisha and Skala.